This is Pete Finster on Wednesday the 10th of October, talking to the amazing Steve Hackett on my right for GetReadyToRock.com. Great to see you again, Steve. Nice to see you too. And surprisingly, almost, we're here to talk about you, uh, not resurrecting, revisiting your Genesis back catalogue. Right. On a hell of a project. Yes. I say a hell of a project, it's over 150 minutes worth of music. It's, it's very long, yes. It's oh, okay. two CDs, uh, yeah. both of which are in excess of 73 minutes, if I've counted correctly. Uh, so it's probably the longest album anyone's ever done, but that wasn't the reason for doing it. It, was just, it just worked out that way, because I, I, I decided I was going to um, record my favourite tunes of Genesis during that era. Thanks. And I'd already done it once before with um, Genesis Revisited number one. So I, I, 1996, I think that was. That's the one. And, and uh, I'd recorded Water of the Skies and First of it, you know, a couple of favourites and favourites. And then um, I thought, well, um, I'll just choose my favourite tunes and then EMI said to me, you know, having agreed on this uh, 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 century media, uh, um, why don't you do uh, tracks where the guitar is crucial to the plot? I said, well, that's a whole other album. Yeah. So I decided to record that one at the same time. So between uh, January and August this year, we managed to get the thing done. But it was going to get some, to get a couple of albums done and, and the 35 odd people that are on the thing. Well, you've answered two of my questions there immediately. One was, did you highlight the guitar, mean to highlight the guitar on these pieces, which you obviously have? I did. And the time spans nine months, which I guess it would be for a project like that. Yeah, it, it was... Um, um, I, I didn't think we were going to finish it because, um, uh, you know, a month or two before we were due to end, uh, Roger King, who was engineering it, mm -hmm. said, hey, we're not going to get this mixed in time. You're not going to be happy with the mixes. You know, you know what you're like. I don't know what he's like, you know, and he, he like, uh, we don't always accept the first mix of something, um, but we had to, you know, okay, well, there isn't time really, you know, I mean, it, and he's a producer on this, of course, now, that's right, before yeah. he, he, yeah. he played keyboards and whatever else. That's right, yeah, um, we, we, you know, we share, we share production on, on these things, yeah. so we, 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 we co-produce these things, and then, um, it's, it's important, you know, he's, he's involved on this, um, uh, he's involved in this one, co-producing this, and, producing the Scracking project before this yes. with, with, with Chris Squire. Which, which went to, very well, of course. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I very much, you know, we, you know, he and I have been a, a musical partnership now for quite some, some time, and, and there's a lot of different styles that we've, we've gone at, you know, we've gone at things yeah. with orchestra, the classical things, and then, and rock things, and then it, that's all kind of come together in this, in this project, because yeah. uh, we've not just reproduced everything, we no, you've gone into um, vintage people. No, yeah. No. And you've gone, of course, and you've made this huge leap, really, from your self-produced in your living room, as you said, at, at yeah. the solo album out of the tunnel's mouth, yeah. to doing this mammoth project. So, was yeah. there a lot of pre-planning before you, you went into this? Well, we had we had people who recorded at home. I mean, mostly the singers. Yeah. Uh, they wanted to work at home. They all had home studios or some kind of facility. And uh, so. Uh, I think there's no point listening to a singer when you're trying to get the words right and get it in time and in tune. But when they send you something that's in time and in tune, it's an awful, awfully nice position to be in because otherwise yeah. you, know, you can sit there throughout this and try to midwife it through, but the yeah. singer's got to give birth. Yeah. And, um, and no amount of prompting is going to do it uh, when a singer's happy. Uh, quite so. So th thinking, about the pre th thinking about the pre-planning as well in regard to the singers, yeah. Um, was it kind of self-evident that, that one singer would be good for one particular song? Or did they show an inclination to what they wanted to sing? How did that work? Well, I thought, I'll let the singers decide what songs they're most... And there's a lot of singers, to. I should say. A <laughs> hell of a lot of singers on it, yes. Do you want to tell everybody sort of Yeah, people on it? some of the people on, who are on it. Uh, Nat Silver, yeah. um, uh, Simon Collins, uh, Phil Collins' son, uh, Jacko Jacksick, uh, Stephen Wilson, of course. Um, you know, there, are, there, are, there are so there are so many. Um, John Wetton. John Wetton, yes. Nick Kershaw. People you wouldn't necessarily expect, I guess. Exactly. Michael Ackerfeld. Yeah. Uh, so two Swedish singers, and uh, I sing a little bit on it. Uh, but that wasn't the main reason for wanting to do it. I wanted to share it out because a lot of these singers say, that you know, Gabriel and Collins are hard acts to follow, and I thought you know safety in numbers here with the, 
so it'll throw the heat off any one no, scene. If you don't like one scene, you get another. Um, um, there's Amanda Lehman singing Ripples, for it's instance. It's a great song. It's a great song. You know, obviously, it's, it's, it's a girl's take on, 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 on that, so it's reinventing in that sense. Uh, but we've got orchestra in some places where we might just have had keyboards. Uh, but I've and what about the new technology? Ah. What, 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 what does that give you that you previously couldn't? Well, call for it. I think, you know, when these tracks were originally recorded way back in the 70s, I used what you now call vint vintage amps and, and pedals. Whereas now, um, I do it all in the box. You know, the box is mightier than the building. The computer is the studio, really. And there are lots of amp plugins. And you move the mic virtually in the box, and that's a bit of a laugh. But, you know, it's it's a great sound. So I, I use a couple of a couple of favoured pedals, really. And the rest of it is all in the box. And what about former uh, fellow Genesis band yeah. members, have yeah. you discussed this with them at all? Do they know what's uh, going on? I don't know what's going on, but you know, it's, it's the great unspoken, the elephant yeah. in the room, you know, when I was at the Broadway Wars with them, you know, yeah. we're talking about anything but, um, it, it's in the nature of the band, you know, that's how, that's how it is. Yeah, uh, and, and thinking about the technology and the orchestration, Supper's Red has got this immense Ooh. sonic quality. Yeah. That, that must have been, that on its own must have been a huge undertaking, I guess. Yeah, well, we had a couple of drummers uh, uh, yeah. on, on, on the project. Jeremy Stacy, who was on the uh, Squacking project, works with Noel Gallagher these days. Um, he did the Subs Ready stuff, and he did um, Dancing with the Moonlit Night, which is um, another highlight. Another one, yeah. Um, and it was Gary O'Toole who did the drums on the rest. Um, Subs Ready, yeah, it's a bit of a major commitment doing that because you keep thinking you finished the number, and you realize. Oh, I'm going to go back and do that guitar part because I forgot that because I'm playing all three guitar parts on there. Yes. And, uh, so, um, but we have other guitarists on the album. Um, there's uh, Rhino Stolt of Flower Kings on, on uh, Return of the Giant Hogweed, yes. sung by Neil Morse. Um, so we did, you know, the version we did with Transatlantic, really, with that, you know, the version I did live. And um, uh, now who else? Uh, Steve Rothery of Marillion, another guitarist on Lamia. So we're swapping phrases at the and, uh, and Nick Herschel singing that one. I guess some of these guys must have been drawn to the, the idea of playing Genesis music because their history is, is prop not that Well, stuff. luckily many of them said, I grew up listening to this stuff and I'll do it just for the crack and um, it's a labour of love, uh, which meant that, you know, if I'd have been paying everyone individually, it, it wouldn't have happened. So, you know, I will be repaying favours from here to, to the grave because yeah, yeah, yeah. 35 people who, who played and sang wonderfully. You've also gone, gone back to Please Don't Touch, which was a song that I think you wanted to uh, float when you were in Genesis and they yeah. didn't have it. Was, yeah. was, was going back to those times, was that uh, really the point at which you started thinking about leaving the band and striking out on your own? Well, Genesis was famous for having ideas that would be rejected from one album, only, yes. to, only to show up on another. Um, in the case of Please Don't Touch, it was originally linked to, for those who, who love Wind and Wonder, it was linked to What Gorilla? It was the same rhythm. Right. Um, and um, I felt that it was very strong. It was a variation of a melody that came up on the second side of the vinyl edition of Wind and Wonder. And that track was called Unquiet Slums for the Sleepers. So it was a variation on that, but with a, with a driving rhythm that feels fabulous uh, weather report orientated rhythm and uh, fast bail and um, uh, I thought wow if the band rejects that you know um, what am I doing do you know what I mean yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought no here's the time to, to step out on my own and, and sure enough that became a great stage favourite with audiences yes. and I was able to do that and it fits perfectly into this project it's great yeah it was it was a kind of rules for the ball for the wall kind of yeah. piece with just relentless really it goes through a lot of time signatures and, and the closing shadow of the horror fans yeah which which is a marvellous marvellous piece that, that really is evocative of that early genesis time isn't it was, well, was that the, the thing behind the door? Uh, that the reason? It, it was. Um, now, 1972 Foxtrot, um, the end of that piece yeah. was something written by Mike Rutherford. And uh, it, the end of The Shadow of the Hierophant was something that we rehearsed for the Foxtrot sessions. And again, I thought, what are we doing throwing out that bit? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, once it was done, uh, in, uh, I, and Mike said, yeah, sure, use it in 
1975, he was helping me with Voyage of the Acolyte, so it was Phil. Um, and I said, well, do you mind if I join it onto this tune? Because I, I think it could be really strong. And um, it came out really, really well. Um, and when we did it, um, you know, yes, from, from the band, there was, there was the vibe, oh, we could have used it for Genesis. Um, and, and here we are, all this, all this similarly with Please Don't Touch. I'm just saying it's a little bit like there are some deleted scenes a bit like you know going back director's cut and all that sort of business so um yeah and, and, and it's part of the year dancing with the moonlight night you you yeah. uh, you say on a little bit of green sleeves at the beginning yes that's right which is, which is yeah. a nice idea isn't it? yeah it was my wife jim's idea and uh, what a lovely idea because it's all things english with the central english ditty isn't it well one of the things i was generally going to ask you was uh, uh, and you've answered it in part but man, but a few years ago the late frank zappa re-recorded all his classic stuff yeah to the horror of a lot of his fans he yeah. put in new rhythm sections they put yeah you, you seem to have been a lot more delicate in your approach a lot more thoughtful well uh, i think when i did revisited number one um i thought it's it's incumbent upon one to come <laughs> out with uh, variations but this time i thought no i'll just go for authenticity and there's no point trying to change um, any of the guitar solos on, on the musical box. They're just too well known. Yeah. Uh, and it's part of the fabric of the song. It's part of the writing. So um, I haven't changed a lot of things. And really, it's a precursor or an excuse to go on the road and play this stuff all over again. So. And on that very subject, you should yeah. let everybody know when the, when the tour starts and where, if you can uh, remember. In this country, the tour starts um, May the 10th. Uh, that'll be 2013. Yeah, May the 10th um, at Hammersmith. Yeah. Hammersmith, Lovers, Apollo, Hammersmith Odeon to the to the old guard. Yeah. Uh, well, we're looking out for that. Uh, I also should mention that apparently your blue vinyl edition of this amazing project is already sold out. Yeah. Oh well, there you go. It's it's funny, isn't it? It's it's um it's funny how it's going. Um, you know, both the album is selling very very well. And and um, uh, the ticket sales are also going like wildfire, which is awfully reassuring because otherwise I might just have to shoot myself. <laughs> and they're going to the states, and uh, Sharon over there is going to give us a, a full copy of the dates. I think. Ah, just right. in case uh, the lovely Sharon has uh, given us the, uh, the dates here. Where are they? Yes. Okay. The full yeah, the English dates are. Uh, have a Smith on Apollo, yeah. on the, the Apollo on the 10th of May. 11th of May, Cardiff, St David's Hall. Uh, 12th of May, Liverpool, Philharmonic. Uh, Glasgow Royal Concert Hall on the 14th. 15th of uh, May, Gateshead, The Sage, uh, serving the Newcastle area. Uh, 16th of May, Birmingham, the Symphony Hall. Which is a lovely, lovely venue. Symphony Hall, yeah, yeah. Uh, Very good. One last general question, which, yeah. which kind of, uh, again, we've, we've touched on, but it's, it's a broader question. Which is when when you partly or, or wrote anchored these songs many many yes. years ago, you did so yeah. the the in blissful innocence of youth. Yes, uh, and here we are, yeah. Yeah. A, a fully a, you know a successful mature uh, recording <laughs> artist with a whole body work behind you. Yeah. What what was the essential difference? Going, how did it feel to go back to that work? I mean, I realise you've been playing some of it down the years anyway. Well, a lot of these things uh, when they were first re released were not hits in their day, and then they sold bucket loads but over a very slow period it's a very yeah. weird thing you know it's a bit of a sort of citizen cake wasn't it hit in its day now a bit of a classic and and um, so durability uh, durability that's it it, it, had, it had legs and and, and 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 then wings but first of all it crawled and did you finally this really is the final question did you when you recorded that stuff back in 96 did you always have a longer term vision of doing this something like this well on. at that time of course the band was still in, in existence yes no one no one had retired no. Um, and uh, it might not have been the best thing to do it, it might not have been the best thing because you know uh, 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 the reunions were mooted then and even five years ago reunions were mooted but I think it's highly unlikely you know there's only a certain amount of one guy saying well I'm up for it call me when you need me and, then, and I, I don't think that's ever really not realistic, no, I think. Well, you've done um, a great job on this. Well, thank you. Really, really great job. Thank you. The sequencing and the flow is amazing, considering you've got all different time periods involved there. Yeah. And the amount of people involved in it. Uh, I urge everybody out there to go and check it out. It's uh, Genesis Revisited 2. 
It's been Pete Fees for talking to Steve Hackett. Thank it's been you. an absolute pleasure Thank for you to get ready to rock.com. Thank you to Eric Harvey on the camera. Good afternoon.